Before we consider what happens when oxygen is absent from the cell, let's first establish how to think about the entire cellular respiration pathway in cells. We're going to take a eukaryotic cell, for simplicity's sake, here. Um, and we have a cytoplasmic region where glycolysis takes place, where the um, glucose molecule is broken up, ultimately to result in the formation of two molecules of pyruvate. And this leads to the production of some ATP for the cell from the addition of phosphate to an existing molecule of ADP, as well as the um, reduction of NAD plus into NADH. NAD plus having picked up some electrons from the um, glucose molecules. I'm not accounting for the numbers accurately here, but you get the idea. Again, we're considering the entire pathway, so pyruvate generated in the cytoplasm will be transported across the two membranes of the mitochondrion into the matrix of the mitochondrion, where it will um, be further reduced to acetyl-CoA, and then taken through the citric acid cycle. Okay, I've blown up the mitochondrion here so it's easier to see what's going on. So again, we have acetyl-CoA that's being generated in the matrix of the mitochondrion. This was a redox reaction that did result in some formation of some NADH. As the carbons of acetyl-CoA are further oxidized in the citric acid cycle, more NADH molecules are um, reduced. In addition, there's some FADH2 that's um, formed, but we're not going to worry about that for the sake of simplicity. All of these electron transporters are going to donate their electrons to the electron transport chain. This leads to the oxidation of NADH back into NAD+, which can allows the TCA cycle to continue to function. The electrons picked up by the first complex of the electron transport chain will move through this chain of proteins embedded in the inner membrane of the mitochondria until it is, they are picked up by molecular oxygen, which is reduced to form water after picking up some protons that are um, hanging around in the matrix of the mitochondrion. This uh, transfer of energy is uh, exergonic, and the um, energy that's released in part is used to move protons from the matrix into the intermembrane space, creating a proton gradient across the inner membrane of the mitochondrion. That proton gradient is used to drive ATP synthase as uh, the protons are allowed to diffuse back into the matrix down their concentration gradient. The energy released in that process is used to drive ADP and phosphate to come together and form molecules of ATP, which can then go diffuse out to the cell to drive cellular processes. Now that we've established what happens normally in the presence of oxygen, let's now consider what um, the absence of oxygen would impact most directly. Because we lose oxygen here, the electron transport chain doesn't have a terminal electron acceptor. This means that electrons can't flow through the electron transport chain, releasing um, energy to drive the proton pumps. So proton pumps are silent in the absence of oxygen. This directly impacts uh, ATP synthase, which no longer has a proton gradient to drive it to form ATP. So ATP in the mitochondrion um, 
is no longer being formed in the absence of oxygen. Secondarily, because NADH um, normally donates its electrons to the electron transport chain and all of the molecules in the electron transport chain remain in their reduced state because they can't pass on their electrons to molecular oxygen, and the, the transition from NADH back to NAD plus no longer takes place. Very quickly, this means that there is a deficit of NADH in the cell and an accumulate... Uh, there's a deficit of NAD plus in the cell, I'm sorry, that means we can't, because we can't regenerate it. And that grinds the TCA cycle to a halt, also uh, stops the um, redox of pyruvate, um, the oxidation of pyruvate, I apologize, for, um, that occurs right prior to the citric acid cycle. That leaves glycolysis back out in the cytoplasm. Again, as um, we discussed earlier, glycolysis also requires um, or leads to the formation of NADH here um, as the glucose molecule is starting to be oxidized. And that NADH, uh, in the presence of oxygen, would donate its electrons to the electron transport chain in the mitochondrion. In fermenting cells, regardless of whether they're doing lactic acid um, fermentation, like in your muscle cells, or alcohol fermentation, which happens in plants as well as yeast, um, a pathway in the cytoplasm, so this is all happening in the cytoplasm, allows pyruvate to be reduced once again, donating electrons back uh, from NADH to the carbons on pyruvate, resulting in the formation of lactic acid or lactate or ethanol, ultimately, and more, most importantly, resynthesizing NAD+, which can continue to be used in glycolysis. So in the presence of, in the absence of oxygen, NAD+, continues to be regenerated in the cytoplasm exclusively, which means that fermenting cells can uh, derive the ATP to uh, maintain themselves and con continue their functions only um, uh, by the regeneration of this NAD plus intermediate. Um, and only glycolysis is what's uh, allowing ATP to be produced.